What's up traders? Today we're talking all about the expected move, what it is and how to calculate it. You don't need Thinkorswim to find this number, but you do need access to the options chain of whatever the underlying asset it is that you're trying to calculate the move for. And just as an addition there, I would mention that this is going to work best on things that have a very efficient options market, not some obscure penny stock with no options volume that trades. So that being said, what is the expected move in the first place? It is the range where we would expect with about 68% accuracy prices to be contained for any given time period. Now, just for some context, what we have on the screen in front of us here is the weekly expected move for the S&P 500 for the upcoming week, right? That's the weekly expected move. But do know that you can look at expected move over a longer time frame. As long as there's an options expiration, you can look at the expected move. A common one would, of course, be the monthly expected move about 31 days out from wherever you currently are, right? That is a possibility here. Now, why is it about 68% percent accurate. Well, if we think back to normal curves, bell curves, standard distributions, and remember that on a standard curve here, generally speaking, 34% contains a one standard deviation move to the up and downside. We add that together, and it's very likely that, again, under normal market conditions, we could expect a full 68% uh, you know, accuracy of this type of reading. So back on over to the platform, how do we calculate the move? What happens in the options chain? Let's get into that now, but one more quick little uh, addition here. If you're looking for the weekly expected move, please take this reading after the market has closed on Friday, but before the market has opened on Monday. When the market's closed is the best time to take these readings, not when the options chain is going off the wall. So let's go on over to the options chain now here inside of Thinkorswim. I have open here the June 10th expiration that of course is six days away from today. I'm filming this on a Saturday. This is the option series that expires this upcoming Friday thus will be the weekly expected move uh, option chain that we want to look at. Now, if you're using Thinkorswim or Tastyworks, they've gone ahead and got, uh, given us a really convenient calculation here in the top right-hand corner of the chain. This is the expected move. We're looking at plus or minus uh, $10.19. But I just said you don't need Thinkorswim to calculate the move. So how else can you find a very similar number? There's three methods that I want to share with you on today's session. The first one is going to be looking at the pricing of the at the money straddle. Now, don't worry if that options jargon sounds like a foreign language to you. Let's break it down nice and easy. All we need to do is look at the last traded price, the closing price, from the Friday session. For the SPY, this past Friday, it closed at 410.54. Let's go into the strikes now and find what is the closest to that number. Let's round up here and call it 411 because we're above 410.50 by four cents. So the at the money strike would be 411. Now to make this a straddle and find the pricing of a straddle, all we have to do is buy the call and I'm gonna go ahead and press control on my Mac keyboard and buy the put on the ask as well. And this pricing right here, 991, is the expected move essentially, just based on a very rough estimate of the at the money straddle. Again, you can see right here, we are calling this a straddle because that's what it is. That is the option structure here. If you don't have the ability to press control on your keyboard and add multiple legs at the same time, I'm gonna delete this. You could do the same thing by coming to your 411 strike, right click on where it says buy, go to buy, and in here you want to pick straddle, and you'll see the same thing comes up. So we have our straddle, it is the 411 strike right here, it's for this Friday, which is June 10th, and the pricing, once again, is 991. Two ways to achieve the same outcome. So just based on a very, very quick estimation, 991 would be the expected move based on this calculation. You can see it's only off by roughly 30 cents from Thinkorswim's estimation as well. The method number two is going to be an addition or another step here to this exact calculation that we've just done. So I'm not going to change anything down below, but what we're going to do is add the pricing of the first in the money strangle. Now, again, don't worry if the options jargon sounds confusing. Think about it like this. We want to go one uh, you know, move in the money here, so that way we're strangling the last traded price, right? We want in the money strangled. So 410.54 is the price. We want to make sure we have the first in the money call and the first in the money put added to the pricing of the at the money straddle. I know it sounds like a lot, but trust me, it's not that bad. Again, on a Mac, I'm holding control on my keyboard. I'm going to buy on the ask the 410 call, and I'm going to add in another of the 411 puts. 
What this has done is it's added here both of those pricings together for a grand total of $20.38. Now you might be saying that's way far away from 1019 and you're absolutely right. But think about it like this. We've just taken two pricings and added them together. Wouldn't it make sense to divide this now by those two pricings to find an average between the two? And lo and behold, if you divide 2038 by two, you come up with 1019. Pretty cool, right? That is the exact uh, sort of calculation that Thinkorswim has done behind the scenes. Just to recap what we've done here and go through it one more time, because I know it can be confusing at first glance, we're gonna delete this. We're gonna start from scratch. We first wanna start out with the pricing of the at the money straddle. That means finding the last traded price, finding the nearest strike price here, 411 on our options chain. We're going to buy on the ask the call. We're going to buy on the ask the put. This is our rough guesstimation. From here, to make it a little bit more accurate, we're gonna go one strike in the money on a strangle. So we wanna go one strike in the money here for the 410. We'll add another 411 put as well, both of them being bought on the ask. You can see that our uh, total debit now is 2038 divided by two. Once again, gives us 1019 as that expected move. Very cool stuff here. You can do this with any um, expiration series that you want. As we mentioned earlier, if you're looking for a monthly expected move, use 31 day expiration options. This, what we've just done here is for the weekly expected move. So those are two methods that I've just shown you, but what about the third? What's the last method? This one's actually uh, quite cool in my estimation because it brings into play implied volatility skew. As we know, markets generally tend to move much quicker to the downside. So the put side of the chain and much slower on the upside, the call side of the chain. So to account for this, what we're going to look for is something that we've called the 16 delta method. So on the call side, my delta column is right here. And on the put side, my delta column is right here. What we want to do is find the strike price where the delta is 16 cents, not negative on the put side, obviously. So if we come on over to the call side, 16 delta puts us roughly in between these two strikes right here. If we drag it on over, it's in between 422 and 422.50. Let's call that 422.25. If we look at the 16 delta on the put side, that's going to put us somewhere up here. It's in between 397 and 398. 397.50 is what we'll call the low end of the expected move. Now, this essentially is telling you what those numbers are. So on the downside, we should expect a lower limit of 397.50. And on the upside, we should expect an upper limit of uh, 422.25. Now, if you compare that, and I've done the math off on the side for us, to 1019, Basically, the difference on the upside, let's cover the upside first, is that the upside's being muted here. If you add 1019, actually, I think this is on the chart already. Yeah, look at that. Uh, so if you look here, the difference is the difference in the volatility on the downside. So what's happening here, this blue dashed line is the expected move that Thinkorswim has calculated. The blue dashed line above and below here, the largest of the ranges, is the 16 delta, uh, delta method that we just discussed. So overall, it is a larger range, but notice how there's less skew to the upside and more skew to the downside, accounting for the fact that markets tend to move faster to the downside instead of faster to the upside, right? It's easier for people to panic out of positions as they're moving lower. Implied volatility is always higher on the put side versus the call side. So an interesting little tidbit there. Now, why does this 16 delta method work in the first place? Here's where it really comes together with our standard deviations. If we look at roughly the 16 delta uh, probability of in the money, we're again, very close to about 16% in the money. It, what's cool about that is if we go back on over to our bell curve, right? And we add the total of what we have here, 1350 and 250, obviously it's not quite 16, uh, but it's pretty, actually it is 16. What am I talking about? That is 16, of course. So 16 is what we have of probability of in the money, noting that again, because we're looking at that to be the limit, we're essentially expecting the 34% to be anything inside of that range. Do you see how that's working there? So 16% is this added together, and the probability of that option going in the money 
uh, is on that sort of upper tier, the second standard deviation, third standard deviation. So it would be reasonable to expect that the market would want to stay above, in the case of the put side, that 16 delta strike. Now, the same thing is pretty cool about the probability of touch. If you look at this column right here, notice that the probability of touching that is roughly between 31 and 35-ish percent there. And that makes perfect sense, again, going back on over to the curve here, that there's a 34% likelihood that you get somewhere close to this range. Isn't that interesting that the 16 delta can tell us all of these things and the math works out perfectly. So just as a quick recap here on the SPY chart itself, all I've done is just manually drawn in these lines. There's no algorithm that's doing this for me. I've come here, I've drawn in price levels manually. I just adjusted them so they're blue and I've drawn in a rectangle in between and that's how you calculate the expected move. Let's do another quick example here on QQQ. Okay, so QQQ is where we want to be looking. Notice that I don't have any drawings on the chart, so we're truly starting from scratch. Let's go through and do all of the methods that we've talked about so far. We are on the QQQ. You can see that change has taken effect. Oop, if I just switch to uh, a white arrow here, we are looking at the QQQ options chain. So thank you for bearing with me. Let's get into the second example here. You can see that the thinkorswim calculation is giving us $10.47 as an expected move. Okay, if we quickly come on over to the chart and plot that out from the last traded price. I'm just going to quickly do this. I have the calculation off on the other screen. Uh, so 316.67 is going to be our upside. I'll quickly change this to blue so it's congruent with what we just saw on the SPY, right? So there's our upside of the expected move. Let's duplicate. Let's edit that. And we're going to change that to the downside read, which is 295.73. Okay, and uh, we're good on color scheme there. So here we go. This is the expected move based on Thinkorswim's calculation. If you wanna get fancy, as I do in some of the weekly watch list videos, you can come in and draw a rectangle in there as well to represent a shaded area where again, we would expect with about 68% accuracy, prices to be contained within. Now, how again do we do all of those three different methods if we don't have the convenience of Thinkorswim's estimation tool up here? The first one, just as a recap, is pricing out the at the money straddle. So how do we do that? We look at the last traded price here on the Friday session, if we're looking for that weekly expected move, 306.20, that of course is gonna get us closest to 306 as the at the money strike. We of course want to buy on the ask the call and buy on the ask the put and this pricing right here is going to get us pretty darn close to what we're looking for. You can see in this case off by again roughly about 30 cents uh, just for round numbers sake, right? We can go ahead and further improve the accuracy of the reading by adding in the first in the money strangle. Again, all you have to do is come one strike in the money, so 305, and then we'll go back to the 306. That gives us 2093. When we divide that by two, we're going to be left with 1046, right? 1046 is your read there. And what does that look like in relationship to this? Off by one penny. Off by one penny. Pretty darn good method, right? So 2093 over two, off by a penny from Thinkorswim's fancy proprietary calculation. And again, all we've done is added the pricing of the at the money straddle, the first in the money strangle, and divide by two. That's the second method right there. And then if we go out and do our sort of... Um, 16 delta method, right? We're looking for the 16 delta. Look at that. It shows up perfectly on the put side. You can see that right here. That's going to be your 293 on the downside. And on the call side, where is our 16 delta? It looks like it's right here showing up perfectly as well. And for a number, that's going to be 318 on the upside. So 293 and 318, we're going to add that to our chart here. I'm just going to quickly duplicate. Oops, we want to duplicate, not edit duplicate and then edit. There we are. And what we want to do is add in our 318 for the call side and we'll duplicate this one and edit this one on the bottom as well. Oops, edit. Here we go. And we were looking at 293 on the downside from the 16 delta method. And again, you can see the difference here. The skew on the put side is calculating more risk to the downside than there is to the upside, okay? So this is just a secondary example on how we can calculate expected move on the QQQ. You can do this for anything that has a fairly liquid options chain. If we really wanna push the bet here and go one more example, AAPL is another good one here. Just because the options chain is so liquid, we'll 
come on over to that options chain now. Again, we're looking at six days until expiration. This is the upcoming Friday. We'll move a little bit quicker here through the third example. $6.06 is the expected move from the platform itself. If you don't have Thinkorswim, you can price out the at the money straddle, which is going to be buying on the ask the nearest strike, uh, or excuse me, I did this wrong. Notice that our pricing here is 145.38. So we want the 145 strike buying on the ask and buying on the 145 ask for the put. That's 570, again, off by roughly about 30 cents on the rough approximation there. If we wanna take it one step further, we can add in the first in the money strangle. So we're gonna go one call up here and we're gonna add in another of the puts there at the same level. That's 1197 over two, which is going to give us a rough number of 598, okay? And that's getting much closer to that $6.06 mark. So that's a pretty, uh, a good approximation there. And if we quickly take a peek at our 16 delta options, let's go ahead and close that up. 16 delta is going to be in between here somewhere. So let's go 137.50 on the downside and 16 delta on the upside is gonna be somewhere in here. Looks like there's quite a bit of discrepancy between the 150 and the 152.50 strikes. Notice you have 25 and 15. So let's just round up ever so slightly from 152 and go with like a 153, okay? 153 is what we'll use there for a um, upper edge of the expected move. If we come on over to Apple's chart itself, I will quickly plot these out for you. Uh, I don't mind if you tune out. Again, we've gone through some decent examples so far. I'm just gonna round it out by typing these in manually here on Thinkorswim. So the upper edge of the Thinkorswim expected move is gonna be 151 and 44 cents. There we go, we'll press okay. We'll change that just so it's congruent with everything we've done so far. Good, let's duplicate that, boom. Let's go ahead and edit the properties and the low edge of the expected move based on the thinkorswim approximation of 606 that we just saw is gonna be down around 139 uh, and 32 cents, okay? So let's press okay, good. And you'll notice, again, our closing price is halfway in between. There's about a 68% chance 34 on the upside and 34 on the downside that we remain in this range. Again, we can add in our nice convenient little shaded box if we do something like this, just to give us a better visual representation. And what we'll do as well is we will duplicate this, we'll act, uh, excuse me, edit, and we will just pop in that 16 delta approximation, which on the upside was 152. Uh, 50, or what, no, excuse me, we went with 153, right? That's what we rounded to there. I uh, will press okay. And on the downside, let's edit that to be, uh, excuse me, we did not duplicate. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, a lot of clicks here inside of Thinkorswim, but if we do this, here we go. And we'll change this to 138 on the downside with the duplicated drawing. And you'll notice that it's actually in Apple, something might be going on with the chain here that it's actually pricing in about the same. Maybe it's got something to do with the fact that on the upper end here, we had that weird sort of skew uh, between the 152 and, you know, let's go back on over to the chain so we can say it precisely, the 152 and the 150, whereas on the downside, notice that we're only dealing with a dollar difference, correct? So that might have something to do with why the skew as in, isn't as um, proportionate as what we've seen in some other examples. So that's it. That is the expected move. That's a tutorial on how you can find it and a couple of different methods if you do not have access to Thinkorswim or Tasty Trade, who I believe also has and displays the expected move. Now, what do we use this for? What's the point of looking at expected move? Uh, what's the deal with it all? It's basically going to give uh, a little bit more context to your trading week, right? Does it make sense, uh, you know, to be looking for new money longs if we're cracking outside of the expected move to the upside? I would certainly say that you're starting to chase it in an instance like that. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not a perfect container for price action for the upcoming week. Prices can move outside of this range, but it gives you, again, that added piece of context to say it might not be wise to be chasing new longs up here and instead think about the opposite side. Is there reason to believe there might be some retracement back lower? Can you participate in some sort of pullback? Things of that nature. Ultimately, this is not something that should be used as a to the penny calculation. It is a piece of context that we can add into our trading to help us make better decisions. So that's going to wrap up the tutorial. If you've enjoyed it today, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget that all of our normally scheduled content will be coming out as always. And with that being said, I wish you a green trading week. Thank you.